Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, September 2nd. Well, if you're new to town, we call this Military City USA. We have a huge Air Force and Army uh, presence here in San Antonio, but we also have Navy and Marines, and the Navy is out with new regulations. If you're active duty or reserves, you already know about this, but we're just kind of playing catch up here on the civilian side. So uh, just for the headline, it says this will allow men to be bald and wear earrings and women to have very short hair. Yeah, so diving a little further into this article from Yahoo News, men are now allowed to be bald, have a flat top or fade, and have a high and tight cut, though sideburn restrictions remain stringent. As Steph just said, female sailors are now permitted to have very short hair. And another policy change regards the wearing of earrings for men. The new guidelines make it permissible for them to wear earrings while on leave or liberty status in civilian attire and off military institutions. Earrings remain prohibited, though, while wearing civilian clothing if the sailor is performing official duties. Other updates to policy include allowing sailors with accented names to have those accents included on name tags and name patches and permitting the use of specifically colored head covering for sailors going through medical treatments. That's right. Uh, what is it also says? Men with medical or religious yes. waved yes. shaving regimes will also have more leeway to outline or shape the outer edges of your beards. But again, some grooming and accessory changes for the United States Navy. And we do have sailors and Marines here in San Antonio. Good morning to everybody that is serving our great country. And for now, let's look at today's Nine at Nine. Yeah. The Supreme Court voted 5-4 to four to deny an emergency appeal from abortion providers and others that sought to block enforcement of a new abortion law in Texas. SB 8 bans nearly all abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. The constitutional carry law is now in effect in Texas. It allows most residents who legally own a firearm to carry it openly without a permit or training. The Northeast is getting hammered by what's left of Ida. It is causing massive damage, triggering states of emergency in multiple cities and states. At least one person has died in New Jersey due to floods there. President Joe Biden will visit Louisiana tomorrow as the state attempts to recover from Hurricane Ida. The president will survey storm damage and meet with local and state officials. The CDC is issuing a travel warning for Labor Day as COVID hospitalizations across the country hit a seven month high. FDA advisors will meet September 17th to consider Pfizer's booster shot application. Nearly 15 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been wasted here in the US. The CDC says part of that is because those vials have to be used quickly after they are open. The CDC is working with providers and jurisdictions to try to minimize that waste. Today marks the observance of Allied Forces' victory over Japan during World War II. The six-year-long war was fought on every continent except Antarctica. It was on September 2nd that Japan formally surrendered aboard the USS Missouri and Tokyo Bay. Twitter rolling out a safety mode feature. It will temporarily block accounts from interacting with users who have sent harmful language. Twitter says this is better to protect users from harassing tweets. Travelers in some states will soon be able to get through security using digital IDs on their iPhones or smartwatches. Airports in Arizona and Georgia are the first to sign on. And that's today's 9 at 9. If you missed the early edition of GMSA, we were this close to 100 degrees here in the Alamo City yesterday. I know, we reached 99. Um, that still seems pretty hot, though. We're in September, so. Hot is hot. Humidity makes it feel even worse, and we're sort of splitting hairs there with not hitting 100. But officially, we have not hit 100. It was just 99 yesterday. Right now, we're sitting 81 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, southerly winds at about 9 miles per hour, that 2.75, and that really is the problem uh, because we will see those heat index values rise up to about 100, 304 again this afternoon. We're forecasting a high of 98. There is a, a small outside chance of a shower or two, but we're not expecting much on radar this afternoon. Uh, let's look at the numbers right now. We're sitting at 79 hello to 76 and Seguin 82 out there in Gonzales. A lot of humidity there. 83 in Pleasanton and 78 again in Uvalde. Uh, looking at the football forecast, if you're heading out to any of the games tonight, be sure to take a lot of water with you. Find some shade. Kickoff 94, halftime still 90. Partly cloudy skies. Southeast chilly winds 5 to 15 at miles per hour. And some of the headlines today. Heat index will be 100 plus. Stray storm 
Uh, across the northeast, still uh, some dealing with flash flooding. There were tornadoes there yesterday and overnight. A big problem there. We're going to talk more about that. And we'll also look ahead to the weekend forecast, which includes less humidity. Great news. OK, we've got some issues on the roadways. Let's toss it over to Stephen for the latest there. Yeah, thanks, Justin. You know, we were talking about this crash. I was reported off 35 at Evans. If you remember, there was a bunch of uh, flashing lights out there indicating first responders were working to clear that scene up. Uh, but right now, traffic is thankfully moving smoothly and that crash has since cleared out. However, we are seeing some of the residual traffic out there off I-35 southbound at Evans. Uh, traffic right now moving at 26 miles per hour. So that's some big progress out there uh, compared to a little bit earlier when it was moving at five miles per hour. Still have this stall that out there that just cleared actually from I-10 westbound at Loop 16 but still seeing those slowdowns in those eastbound lanes of 1604 at this hour. So do be prepared to slow down in a crash reported here, though, off State Highway 151 northbound leading to a lane blocked at Hunt Lane. So something to be on the lookout for in another crash. Still looks like it just cleared from our system. So good news there off US 90 eastbound at 35 traffic now nice and green moving at 66 miles per hour right now. Uh, morning started off pretty easy, got very colorful with a lot of the delays due to those crashes and stall vehicles. Thankfully, now things seem to be moving nice and smoothly. Just drive safe and make it a good day, guys. Thank you, Stephen. A top story this morning. More than 100 dogs and cats, victims of Hurricane Ida in Louisiana, have found shelter. Right here. Now, San Antonio Humane Society has taken them in. By next week, they expect to put 86 cats and 50 dogs up for adoption. The animals were either surrendered by people unable to care for them during the storm, or they were in Louisiana shelters already. They arrived at the San Antonio Humane Society early this morning. The pets will be put through a medical assessment before they can be put up for adoption. We're able to take in their animals and get them up for adoption quicker and be able to free those shelters in Louisiana so they can take in more animals. And right now, the Humane Society has a full house. If you'd like to help with donations or are interested in adopting, visit Humane Society's website, sahumane.org. In your other morning headlines, the latest from the Caldor fire in Ida, wreaking havoc in the northeast U.S. And a cow stuck in a tree and an alligator in a garage. David Sears is here. It's been a while since we had Wild Kingdom on GMSA yeah. at 9, but we, we got, got it today. It. I'm telling you that. We'll get to that in just a second, but first, let's take you to California where that Caldor fire keeps burning. They continue to fight this huge fire on the ground and in the air. Chopper picking up some water you're going to see right there, and this is the kind of puts it in perspective for you. We're going to see all the smoke from this fire. Look at all this. And there's a chopper. I don't know if you can see it. That's the chopper right there. See that little bitty dot right there flying across? That's how big this fire really is. A plume is huge. Governor Gavin Newsom took a trip to the area for an up-close look. So far, more than 204,000 acres have been torched. This fire has reached the doorstep of folks living in Lake Tahoe. Some left, some chose to stay. It's starting to get better. It looks like it's slowing down a bit. You know, the winds have calmed down and they forecast lower winds for the rest of the next week. So I'm thinking we're going to be OK. Now you can only hope he's right. By the way, the town of Kingsbury, Nevada has been evacuated. That town is east of Lake Tahoe, Nevada. You are looking at funnel clouds moving across a landscape in New Jersey. Ida, big, strong and still letting everybody in the Northeast know it. She left historic rain and spun up twisters. The National Weather Service called large and extremely dangerous. Warnings went out in New Jersey, Pennsylvania and even Delaware. 15 people have been killed in the northeast from this storm. In contrast, only four died in Mississippi and Louisiana after Ida crashed ashore and ripped through the Gulf Coast. All right, let's take it to St. Bernard Parish. This is south of New Orleans, and that is a tree, and that is a cow in the tree. The cow ended up in that tree after the floodwaters from Ida started to recede. Those two guys are trying to move in and save it. They are armed with a machete and a chainsaw in an almost utterly impossible position. This video ended up on YouTube, 14,000 views. Not sure what happened to the cow after the rescue. Hopefully that cow's okay. And now let's go to South Carolina, the home of Jeff and Julie Lindbergh. The kids were in bed, mom and dad watching a movie, and they heard something go thump in the garage, open the door, turn on the light, and whoa, a six-foot alligator in their garage. No way to get hold of animal control that later, that early in the morning. So Jeff started throwing shoes at it and yelling at it. Jeff was like, okay, we need more help than a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> As so the neighbor came with a big broom. They finally swept the gator out of the garage without incident. Now fishing gamer looking for it in the neighborhood somewhere. 
It continues to be straining on those health care workers dealing with COVID patients, the sickness and death. A member of the lab staff at the University of Utah Health decided to let it all go for a few minutes during his break. Tiva Martinson got an accompaniment and then took off his shoes and started in a ballet routine. In the long run, I never really thought that dance would go anywhere. I didn't think it was going to go past just like the six or seven people that were watching. The video has gone viral. Rex Chabot, a former NBA player, even commented on social media. So did thousands of others. Very appreciative of his talent and the moment he took to just kind of give people a little release there in Utah. Very talented. So, yeah. Thank you, David. All right. Right now, tonight, I wait about 81 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. What a study is saying how supportive interactions between parents and kids can help toddlers with social situations. Still ahead, Alicia Barrera tells us about a West Side food pantry representing people from all walks of life here in San Antonio. In 100 years, generations to come will wonder what life was like during the pandemic and how people found hope. Although our stories may seem common, the Woody Museum wants to document oral histories, photographs, and objects of how people here in San Antonio responded to needs during the pandemic. And one of the first stories to be included is that of hunger and how one pantry ignited hope. Alicia Berrera is live from the Jovita Irard Pantry on the city's west side with more on its impact. Good morning. Good morning, you guys. Well, the Jovita Idar Pantry and Fridge is actually celebrating its first year anniversary. It was originally through a donation made by the organization Be the Change Texas that the founders, Rise, L, and Ale, were actually able to set up a pantry just like the one that you see behind me, stock it up with items, and that, of course, right away ignited people to want to help, and it will now go down in history. A donated wooden armory has made history. This is the original pantry that uh, they put up out in front of their home and stocked with food, uh, with personal hygiene supplies, books, anything to help the people within their local area. This is the original structure of the Jovita Idar pantry and fridge, and it was just accepted as part of the Whitty Museum's permanent Texas history collection. What is our story going to be? in 100 years, what will be left of this time period so that we can look back and say, these are the ways that we came together, these are the ways that we struggled, and um, these are the stories of the everyday human being living in San Antonio during this time. It's all part of the museum's rapid response collection to show how neighbors stepped up to meet the needs of others during the pandemic here in San Antonio. One of our uh, wonderful interns, Madeline, who was a student, um, at uh, UTSA. She did a fantastic oral history uh, to gather the, the story of how the pantry started and how it grew into a network with other pantries around San Antonio. The pantry is displayed at the Witte's B. Naylor Morton Research and Collection Center, but will later be part of a larger exhibition to celebrate the museum's 100th anniversary in 2026. It will give us an opportunity to show where the Whitty Museum's actually going in the future, not just celebrating our past, but our path forward. However, more stories and artifacts are needed to tell San Antonio's story. These are the kinds of stories um, people from all walks of life, doctors, nurses, school teachers, stay-at-home parents, what was it like to to, to homeschool your children during the pandemic. These are all relevant stories that seem everyday and common now. And our worry is that people will think of them as not worthy of a museum, but they truly are. The pantry has actually inspired more pantries to be created throughout the city of San Antonio. So that's one of the positive things. And I know that as a community and even individuals, we've been through so much. So the witty, again, they want to collect those stories. So if you have any artifacts, they want to collect those too. If you think yours is worthy of going down in history, all you have to do is to start the process is email stories at wittymuseum.org. Reporting live from the city's west side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right. Thank you, Alicia. A lot of stories out there.
Jess is back and there were some 100s on the map yesterday afternoon. We got close here in San Antonio, some triple digits out west, places like Del Rio, Laredo did get up above 100. It was the hottest day of the year so far. We'll see how things shape up today. We're thinking right around that number, 99 here in San Antonio, 98, 99. Let's look at the numbers from yesterday. I mentioned Del Rio and Laredo got up to 103. The, whole, the entire state uh, was really hot yesterday and the humidity made it just that much worse. Here's the setup. We have high pressure sitting over the middle part of the country. This is one of those domes of high pressure sinking air makes things really hot. We have heat advisories posted from northeast Texas down towards Corpus Christi and then the New Orleans area. Flash flood watches on the edge of this ridge five pressure. There's been some rain, some pretty persistent rain. Places like El Paso and eastern parts of New Mexico. The big story, of course, overnight was all the rain that they saw up across the northeast in New England. That rain has shifted out. This was the remnants of Ida finally moving away. But a path of destruction here when you're talking about Louisiana all the way up to the northeast. Look at these numbers. 8.44 New York City. That was at Newark. Hartford 5.11. Boston close to four inches, Philadelphia, Baltimore, you name it. The, the biggest flooding issues that were right around the New York City area. And there were several reports of tornadoes in parts of New Jersey and New York. So just a busy afternoon and busy overnight. Uh, unfortunately, it does look like some folks have uh, we had some fatalities from that flooding there across the Northeast. Back here at home, we've got uh, mostly cloudy skies, 81 degrees at the airport, 84 Stinson, 82 Kelly and 79 at Randolph. Winds are out of the south anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. You can see our normal morning cloud cover pattern here setting up over Bear County. 83 Pleasanton, 77 in Seguin. Less cloud cover out east, so uh, temperatures starting to shoot up. 81 Kennedy, 85 Victoria. And notice we got a few clouds bubbling up there. Those are some showers beginning to develop on the radar. We'll show you those here in just a second. Heat index. All the way up to 97 of Victoria, 92 Gonzalez, and these numbers will only get worse as the day wears on. Uh, the forecast calls for the heat index around 104 here in San Antonio today. We'll see those numbers come down a little bit over the weekend because I think humidity numbers will be a little bit lower, but the air temperature jumps up, so it really is just sort of a, a trade-off. Uh, looking at the uh, satellite and radar, there are those showers I mentioned starting to gather around Beville and down towards the Corpus Christi area. Some of these will work their way inland. There is an outside chance for shower here in San Antonio. Not a great chance, but it is there. This is around five o'clock today. Shows an isolated shower or storm. So uh, we'll put in about a 10 to 20% chance of rain. That'll be the case again tomorrow too. Just some of this isolated, isolated activity working in during the afternoon hours. Very quickly, let's go out into the tropics and show you what's going on there. We have Hurricane Larry now out in the Atlantic. Looks pretty healthy here. This is going to be a major hurricane. Good news doesn't affect land. At least it doesn't look that way. It's going to stay out of our open water and uh, should be a non factor. Hopefully meantime, uh, this system here, Hurricane Center is watching it. Looks pretty ragged. It's hugging the coastline here of Central America, so it's got to get out in the water if it's going to develop here. 20% chance over the next five days. We'll watch that for you as well. Extended forecast. 96 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. We'll go 10 to 20% today. 98 to uh, Saturday, 99 Sunday with some lower humidity. Uh, for Labor Day, 20% chance of rain, I think mainly late afternoon, 98. And then some slightly better chances of rain, maybe middle part of next week with a 30% shot on Tuesday. But we're still very much in a summer-like pattern here, guys. Uh, no cold fronts in sight. Gotcha. Well, at least no rain, you know, on Saturday and Sunday for those with plans on Labor Day weekend. Should be a good Labor Day weekend. Just make sure you find some shade. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Just about 920. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. How to help toddlers with early signs of autism feel more comfortable with social interaction. The COVID pandemic brought many challenges for families, especially for those with children with learning needs. Now, a new study shows that supportive interactions between parents and kids can help toddlers with social situations. David Sears has that story. Parents are always looking for ways to help their kids make friends. Playtime at the park. Interacting with a lot of other families. But if you have a child with autism, social interaction may be tricky. Now, researchers say with the right tools, parents can help toddlers with autism engage with others. 
In a study of 144 families of one to three-year-olds with autism, toddlers whose parents took part in a special program to support local communication showed significant improvements that they maintained over a six-month period. Social communication is about paying attention to others and sharing their interests even before a child has learned to talk. Scientists say parents can try some of the same activities at home to help toddlers pay attention to faces and take turns while communicating. For example, hide a toy in a small bag and pull the bag close to your face so your toddler will look at you before pulling out the toy. Then make an excited noise so they'll look back at your face. Another idea, play dress up with silly hats or scarves. When your child looks between the object and your face, give meaning by smiling and giggling. Finally, try using a remote-controlled car and make it go. Give meaning to the experience by stopping the car and gasping out loud. Wait for your child to look from the toy to your face. When they do, smile and make the car go again and repeat. David Sears, KZ12 News. And if you think your child may be autistic or just needs some additional guidance, the San Antonio Autism Community Network may be able to help. We will have their contact information posted along with this story on our website at ksat.com. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. A teddy bear helping children face their fears in MRIs. The heartwarming story still ahead. And Texans will no longer have to wait until noon to buy a 12-pack of beer on Sundays. RJ will be live in the studio to tell us all about this new law. And still ahead, Max Massey tells a story about, a, about countless families devastated by COVID-19. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuide this morning, looking at I-35 and Evans. A lot of people on the roadways, but things are moving. We'll be right back. The wait just about over for the new Marvel movie Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Munger Zhang co-stars as the fierce warrior Xia Ling, and she tells me it's more than just an action movie. It's a film about family. It's a film about bond and love. But of course, there's also great fight scenes, which was all new to Zhang, who was nervous and accidentally punched star Simu Liu in the face during their first fight. I didn't mean to. It was an accident, but I did enjoy it. <laughs> Zhang Chi is only in theaters starting tonight. Hi. Would you like to dance? Streaming tomorrow is the new Cinderella with a modern twist. It Billy Porter really plays the fairy godmother life. role, who's yeah, now known as Fab G, like and he tells me it's amazing because as a kid, he never saw himself in fairy tales. As a black queer man on this planet, there, you know, growing up in the 70s and 80s, there wasn't anything to really identify with. You can watch him take on the role tomorrow on Amazon Prime Video. Another delay for the Top Gun sequel, we won't see Top Gun Maverick this year. Paramount moving it from Thanksgiving to next May, as the box office remains weak because of the pandemic. And actor Salma Hayek with a birthday today, the upcoming Marvel's The Eternals star is 55, while Bill and Ted actor Keanu Reeves is 57. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And welcome back. It's 930. In August, there was a surge of positive COVID cases, hospitalizations, and deaths here in Bear County. You're about to meet one of the countless families devastated by COVID. They are grieving the loss of their mother. The 47-year-old died of COVID after she and her family contracted the virus. As Max Massey reports, they say her death is a cautionary tale. The good times we had at shows, birthdays, July 4th, everything, Mother's Day. Chase is telling me how he will remember his mother. 47-year-old Michelle passed away this summer. She passed away after her, Chase, and Chase's family all contracted COVID. When it first came out, I was like, no, nah, it's not well or whatever. Chase didn't think COVID was a big deal. He didn't think he would get it. But now, after everything he and his family have been through. I wouldn't want it on it, my worst enemy. It's something I wouldn't want anybody to go through. All of this started in August, and it just kept getting worse and worse. She called me on the Wednesday, Tuesday, saying that she, she needed to go, and she said that she was having a hard time breathing. She was dizzy, she barely could walk, she barely could talk, and then that's when her oxygen level was low, and then I rushed her down to the Methodist in Jerrington. Chase tells me it was late night after late night worrying about his mom, not knowing if she would make that's it. That's when they put on oxygen, and then 
the oxygen wasn't working, so they had to put her on a ventilator. And ever since the ventilator, just it went downhill, and then she eventually passed. Chase is now working with his siblings to come together. Uh, I guess to keep my mom proud. How do you think he could do that? Achieve what she wanted us to achieve. What was that? Uh, keep working. Don't give up. And just go forward. Don't stop. When a tragedy like this strikes, the first thing you have to think about is how do we honor our loved ones? For Chase, that meant thinking how do we pay for his mom's funeral? Well, the Southside community came together and helped raise funds. Everything's paid for for the funeral. So she's going to have a, a proper burial that she wanted. Now Chase wants his story and his family's story to be heard. That way, they can help others make the right decision. So the biggest life lesson I've learned through all this is don't ever think it can't happen to you because it happens to everybody. And they, since COVID's getting up higher, it's, it's a lot riskier than what it was the first trend. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, hot off the presses, Justin has an update on what's in the air other than humidity. Yep, mold has dropped off, so that's good, but fall elm has jumped up. It's reached the moderate category today, so that's uh, sort of a new addition to the pollen count. Heads up there, everything else is low. Molds, uh, pigweed, and ragweed. Fall elm is at 130. If you were curious, this is fall elm season. It tends to kick up in September. We also tend to see ragweed through about November before we see our first freeze. So those are your fall allergens to watch out for. Temperatures, 79 Boulevardy, 82 New Braunfels, 81 Divine, 80 in Uvalde. Some morning cloudiness out there. Per usual, it won't last very long. We'll see plenty of sun today. Temperatures up around 98 degrees. Just a 10% chance of rain today. We'll see those rain chances stay with us tomorrow before falling off this weekend. Your Labor Day weekend forecast, we'll have that for you here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. A quick look at the roads with Transguide this morning. There's a look at I-10 and Days of Allah. Things are looking good this morning. Well, this morning on KSAT.com, we're asking viewers to submit their stories about 9-11 and the San Antonio Zoo, working to make sure their animals stay safe from COVID. Plus, where to get your hands on some rare Spurs collector memorabilia and other high-priced items for cheap. RJ Marcus tells us about some stories trending on our website. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. Yetis, Yeezys, Xboxes, everything in the alphabet <laughs> is available at this uh, event that we'll tell you guys just a little bit about here in just a second. But first of all, let's go ahead and start with a request from our viewers. Yes, this September 11th will mark 20 years since the 9-11 attacks in New York City and other locations. And we are asking viewers to share their experiences, stories, and reflections about 9-11. Right now on our website, you can tell us what you remember about that day, how did that day change or shape your life, and what does it mean to you now? We're asking our viewers to record a 15 to 30 second video of yourself sharing your memories and make sure it's shot horizontally. That would be sideways, not Instagram style up and down and try to be in a well-lit place. You can submit that video on an article we have at ksat.com and we will share some of those videos. All right, guys, switching gears. So we have some interesting things taking place at our zoo with vaccinations. Some animals at the San Antonio Zoo will be getting their COVID vaccinations pretty soon here. Zoo officials are expecting a shipment of the vaccine and plan to administer the first doses in the next few weeks. The first vaccine recipients will be large cats and primates, including African lions, Sumatran tigers, and white cheek white cheek gibbons. Yeah, that is a species of the ape family. Uh, more species will get the vaccine as it becomes available. The vaccine is similar to the ones that humans receive, but it's specially made, of course, for animals. Animals will also get a booster three weeks after the first injection. Okay, guys, we were talking about this earlier. If you've been looking for a spot to get your hands on a pair of Yeezy shoes, maybe a TV or some Spurs collector's gear, well, the San Antonio Police Department auction just might be the place for you. Yes, SAPD will host an auction tonight for several items that have been seized. The auction will be held at 6.30 p.m. tonight at the VFW located at 650 East White. That is near Roosevelt Avenue on the south side. Bidders can begin viewing items earlier at around 5.30, and we have the full list of items on ksat.com. And, and as we mentioned, there are Yetis, tools, Xboxes, Versace shoes. I'm always amazed at the list of stuff <laughs> that they have there. Also, a lot of Spurs collectors memorabilia, including a case 
with five rings. Really? Oh. That one is the one that definitely caught my attention. There's a lot of Spurs stuff on this list. I don't, huh. yeah, it must have been recently <laughs> I was amazed what? at the selection the rings. of tools on there. There's that like too. A, there's like a welding kit and uh, chainsaws and everything. Yes, all sorts of, all sorts mm -hmm. of stuff. So mm -hmm. check that out on our website. We have the full list right there. All right, guys, so we talked about a bunch of new laws, but uh, yesterday when we broke down our new state laws that went into effect, but we did mention, of course, this beer and wine law that everyone is talking about today. So starting this weekend, Texans will no longer have to wait until noon to buy 12 pack of beer on Sunday. So this new law allows retailers who sell beer and wine for offsite consumption, like grocery stores, like HEB and convenience stores, to begin selling at 10 10 a.m. on Sundays now instead of noon. Grocery and convenience stores can also sell beer and wine from 7 a.m. to midnight Monday through Friday and until 1 a.m., technically Saturday night, but also Sunday morning. So, yeah, we used to close at 12. You can learn more about this on KSAT.com. Uh, Kate Garrett Berger, of course, broke all this down. We have a story there available for you guys right now. I think this is a big win for the brunch crowd. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, the that's brunchers. true. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the brunchers have uh, have gathered and they have had their say on this news. <laughs> well, that and we've we've all talked about our encounters at HEB on a Sunday where yes. you know it's quarter to noon and you're like, oh, I totally forgot. Yeah, and then you know you're always maybe trying to get uh, a few little drinks before the game start mm -hmm. up or things you yeah. know NFL games. Trying to stock like up. That. Yeah, there you go. Maybe you're hosting some people. So right. Yeah. Very Big true. changes. There. RJ dropping hints right there. <laughs> Thank you, RJ. Thank you. Right now, 938, about 82 degrees. You are watching TMSA at 9. And creating a fake vaccination card, that can put you in a lot of trouble. But if you do make one, make sure it looks real. Next on GMSA at 9, Jeannie Mose reports on the Moderna misspelling fiasco. A fairly significant spelling mistake has landed an Illinois woman in a Hawaiian jail. CNN's Jeannie Mose reports on how a vaccination card tipped off authorities. We're all used to hearing Moderna and Moderna and Moderna vaccines. So when screeners saw this on a proof of vaccination card, Moderna, it wasn't just a linguistic tick. You like tomato and I like tomato. Moderna helped land 24-year-old Chloe Mrozak in jail for several days for falsifying her vaccination record. On Wednesday, she was released on her own recognizance. She presented the card as she flew into Honolulu for a Hawaiian vacation. At the airport, she got through the safe travel screening process. But when her information was more closely checked, officials spotted Moderna and other irregularities. The card said she was vaccinated in Delaware, but Delaware had no such record. Mrozak was arrested at the airport when she tried to leave Saturday. They used a tattoo on her Facebook page to help identify her. Her attorney had no comment when CNN contacted him. She tried to McLovin Hawaii, someone tweeted, a reference to fake ID in the movie Superbad. Wait, you, you changed your name to McLovin? I am McLovin. Social media was McLovin the misspelling Moderna, pointing out other bloopers like drop the mandates. Imagine how she would have spelled Pfizer only partially visible at Wednesday's hearing, she was tearful. I promise, I promise, I, I will do it whatever, whatever it takes. I swear I'm not a bad person. <laughs> the card said she'd gotten injected by Corporal Wolf and Sergeant Monty, apparently from the National Guard. But the letters NRA had people thinking of the National Rifle Association. They are very experienced with shots. Moderna is literally what my grandma Dorothy called Madonna in the 80s. But Mrozak's holiday was shot thanks to that Moderna vaccination call. Jeannie Most, CNN, New York. To be fair, she's not the first one to have been caught with no. a fake vaccination card no. entering the state of Hawaii, and she probably won't be the last. No, a lot of trouble there. Okay, 944 on your Thursday morning. Justin, 
Hello. Good, good morning, guys. Uh, let's look at the drought monitor. It's something we check in on every Thursday. Where do we stand as far as the drought is concerned? And we know we've done pretty good this summer, despite the fact we are now in stage one restrictions for sauce customers. But we look across the West and this has been the problem area. All the wildfires that we've had to deal with. Notice, though, Arizona is doing a little bit better. They got some monsoonal rains help things there. Still a dire situation across parts of Nevada and California. That's where the drought continues to really hang on here in Texas. Just 1% of the state in drought right now. That's uh, that's a really good number. Three months ago, 19% of the state was in drought, so we've done pretty well. Medina Lake, though, still falling 32% full uh, down 40 feet. Uh, it's down 2.2 over the last month or so. But keep in mind irrigation uses and that sort of thing. And Medina Lake tends to fluctuate quite a bit, um, but it is uh, continuing to go down. Satellite and radar showing that we've got a couple of showers down there near Beeville and Corpus Christi. These are trying to slowly work their way north. I think if we're going to see activity today, it's going to be in this area here, but I can't roll out a couple of showers or storms making it to San Antonio a little bit later this afternoon. In the meantime, we've got some of those morning clouds settling in here around uh, Bear County and San Antonio. These will last another couple of hours and then you'll see them scatter out a little bit. And we'll look at partly cloudy skies this afternoon. Mostly cloudy at this hour, 81 feels like 87 though with southerly winds at nine miles per hour. That dew point at 75 and as long as it stays elevated, that heat index will be a real issue today. 82 New Braunfels, 81 Canyon Lake, 85 in Pleasanton, 80 right now in Hondo. You're at 78 in Bandera with some cloud cover there. 83 Del Rio, 81 Carrizo Springs, 87 down in Catula. And your heat index already in the 90s for the eastern and southern portion of our viewing areas. Feels like 99 in Gonzales, feels like 91 in New Braunfels. These numbers are pretty brutal and it gets worse. Heat index values above 100 mo across most of the area, minus the hill country, of course. But I think these numbers may even be a little bit higher than what you're seeing here. We're forecasting a heat index of 101 here in San Antonio. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up to 100, 203, maybe even 104. That's where we were yesterday. Uh, the dew point tracker shows I don't know why it's looking like that, but uh, we'll see high dew points next couple days. I promise the dew point is high today. Uh, it'll drop off Saturday and Sunday, even into Monday. So the dew points look a little bit better this weekend, and that will help us with some of those morning lows. They'll feel a little bit better, but the afternoons will still be plenty hot. High pressures anchored over the middle part of the country. On the edges of this ridge, we're getting some good rain stretching from El Paso all the way up into North Dakota. We're not getting any of that. We have this uh, influence of the high on us. It's basically keeping things dry, minus a few little disturbances trying to work in from the Gulf of Mexico. And I should point out that Ida is finally getting out of here after dumping some very, very heavy rain on the northeast overnight. Just an isolated storm or two this afternoon. That'll be the case again tomorrow. It's showing some of these pop up downpours in it. Even here in San Antonio, we certainly could see it, but I think the best chance will be I-35 and points east. Here's how it plays out on the seven day forecast. 98 degrees today, 96 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain, lower humidity this weekend, and then rain chances come back Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Labor Day looks pretty good. If we're going to see any storms, I think it'll probably be during the afternoon hours, guys. All right, small chance of rain. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 948, 82 degrees. And The Rock has a look-alike, and he wants to drink tequila with the guy. Why his doppelganger is going viral on social media. In your good news today, an unlikely crossover. Dragon's Ball Goku defeating the Flintstones and a recycled crazy car race in Peru. In the San Miguel community, contestants raced in homemade cars built from recycled materials. So the mayor of San Miguel says this is a perfect car contest for families, children, and parents to show their creativity. And I'm trying to watch here. Oh, uh oh, the there's, a, there's a COVID uh, one. Yeah. The winners uh, were three friends who built a car inspired by the Dragon Ball animation. Second and third were taken by Flintstones and Fast and Furious themed cars. Whoops. Oh, wow. Very creative. Dust yourself off, sir. Yes. Uh, and redheads unite. Redheads from all over the world gathered in the Dutch town of Tilburg for the annual Redhead Days. That's quite a crowd. Uh, the three-day event connects and celebrates their luscious locks. Last year's festival was canceled because of COVID. Those who attend this year say it gives them a sense of community.
And for many kids, going to the doctor can be scary, but knowledge is power. There's a new tool at a hospital in Nebraska helping prepare even the youngest patients. It's called Mr. Bear, and here's how it works. Before any kid gets an MRI at the Boys Town campus, Mr. Bear tests out the system. And the hospital officials there say that it will give a solution to parents who don't want to get their kids sedated before the MRI. It can really help them cope and sometimes even complete medical procedures with less or no sedation. Life-size mock MRI shows kids how it works and what it does. And Boys Town National Research Hospital opened back in 2006. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? And as you can see, the rock has a doppelganger and he wants to drink tequila with the guy. No, that's not the rock, but it looks like him. Yeah, so if you haven't heard about this yet this week, Alabama Patrol Lieutenant Eric Fields is going viral because he looks so much like Dwayne Johnson. Actor and wrestler himself also posted pictures of the two and calling uh, Fields the cooler one. <laughs> the Rock says he'd love to share a small batch of his tequila. So Johnson also thanks Fields for his service and urges him to stay safe. Trees, they keep us cool, they clean our air, but did you know they also help fight storm water? I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA. How our local trees combat storm runoff. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide this morning. Things have been looking good in the 9 o'clock hour. There's a look at Highway 281 and San Pedro. Things are moving. And temperatures are on the way up. We'll be up close to 98 degrees today. Same story, second verse, right? 10% uh, chance of a shower or storm. 20% uh, chance coming up tomorrow. Temperatures in the upper 90s. Lower humidity this weekend uh, with highs in the upper 90s. And then some slight rain chances next weekend. Fired up for some football tonight, tomorrow, this weekend. Just uh, stay cool if you're heading out to any of those football games. Well, Justin, we want you to be fired up about baseball as well. Yes. We know it's going to be hot, yes. of course, into summer here in South Texas, but sure. the San Antonio Missions, who have been playing the Sod Poodles this week. For some week, time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great yes. name, great name. Yeah, they've got a, a special going into the long Labor Day weekend. Yeah, you can see them on Sunday. So the, they'll be hosting the Labor Day flash sale this Sunday, and so you can get some half-price tickets uh, for that game. So it's going to be 12 50 and then for infield reserve will be eleven fifty. Outfield reserve will be nine dollars, and so parking also will be five dollars. So that's all discounted. Yeah, that's actually half price parking. Mm -hmm. Fans can purchase tickets in person at the mission's first base box office beginning at ten a.m. Uh, let's see here, and lasting until the seventh inning. Fans can also purchase those tickets mm -hmm. online at samissions.com/tickets or over the phone at 210-675-7275. And so as we've been saying that they'll be taking on the Amarillo Sod Poodles in the finale of their seven game series, and that will be at 6.05, and that is Sunday. And I'm sad I'll be out of town. I won't get to see the Sod Poodles in action. <laughs> I mean, I want the missions to win, but we've, you know, we are interested with the name Sod Poodles. We, we, we are. We're kind of intrigued. <laughs> uh, obsessed, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Again, Labor Day flash sale, 50% off tickets and parking coming up for September, uh, September, Sunday, September 5th. Sounds like a good time. I think yeah. so. It'd be Nothing great. Better going out to the ballpark. Yeah, as long as you're in the shade. Yeah. Have a great That's day, cool. guys. <laughs>